Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Cake Foo Masters series. I am Amelia Carvine. I am your host for Cake Foo. Um, I'm really glad that you guys are here today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we'd love to to get everyone here. We'd love to get the you know the participation and the the comments and the and the questions and everything. So uh, yes, thank you again. I we just we really really love to have you guys here. Um, and especially live, it's it's so much fun it, to see uh, who who comes and, and joins us live and who um, who our stalwarts are. It's really it's really been fun. Um, so I wanted to first before we get started, um, a couple of a couple of uh, announcements, I guess. Next week we will not be having a training. Um, I am moving uh, next week. And so um, we figured that's just a lot to handle with the, with the moving. So we will continue the week after with the training, um, but uh, just just know that next week there will not be a training. Um, so yeah, uh, catch up on some replays <laughs> next week. <laughs> so um, and also tomorrow I have been asked to invited to uh, go and do a. Um, and, and radio interview that's here locally in Las Vegas. And it should be pretty fun. I'm excited about it. Uh, it, it is something that is broadcast through the internet also. So you guys can go and uh, watch it if you want. Um, here, I'll pull up a link for you so that you guys can. That's awesome. I know, isn't that fun? Um, I'll be talking a lot about. Um, it's it's geared towards brides, and so it's you know talking to brides about what to expect with a cake decorator, and you know and you know try and try and resolve some issues that we have with with brides, you know about pricing and and you know consultations and you know all that you know all the things that that we really want to tell brides. I hope to be able to get out there. <laughs> so if you guys want to to uh, Tune into that tomorrow. I think it is at four o'clock. Could be four thirty. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Um, I think it's I think it's actually four thirty um, Pacific time. So um, I'm not sure what time that would be in everybody's time zones, but uh, check your check a time zone website and figure out what time uh, it would be for you and and tune in. I think that would be really fun. So. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I think it should be awesome. Yay. So yeah. Um, all right. Well, let me take that off really fast. Okay. So that's the website there. Um, I I might uh, I'll post this on our Cake Foo website. This link, so you can uh, go and and uh, find it there tomorrow. So there you go. All right, so now for you know getting down to, to why we're here, Sydney. <laughs> we're, we want to talk about Sydney for a while. Um, hey, hey, Sydney, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm so glad that you can come. We we like to have Sydney on. We we have you on fairly often. Um, yeah. It's, it's been that a little while fun. though. It's been a little while. Yeah. Uh huh. So, Glad to have you back. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. It's it's always fun to have you come on, and and especially you know once we start announcing the trainings, I I think Sydney's one of our one of our best followers and fans and and uh, and contributors too. I, I with Cake Foo, I, I I really appreciate all the the promoting that you do of Cake Foo and and all of that. So thank you, Sydney. Yeah, yeah we try and spread the word as much as we can. Yeah, this is good stuff. All right, so um, let's uh, talk a little bit about you for those of um, for those listening that may not know very much about you yet. Um, you started out. You went to a chocolatier school. Is that yes. right? You were what, 15, 16. <laughs> I was 15 when I went to chocolatier school, and I also interned in New York City and West Palm Beach and Orlando uh, to kind of learn. I started about seven years ago. So that's kind of how I got all of my more advanced um, learning. It's amazing to see such a young person and and hear them say, you know, I've been doing this for seven years. You know, right. <laughs> it's it's really it's really awesome. It really is. 
So um, anybody that knows Sydney knows that she really does know a lot about what she's talking about. She's a very a wonderful instructor. If you've never taken a class from Sydney, I would highly recommend it. Um, anytime she's in your area, if you ever get the chance, take a class from Sydney because she really, she's a really great teacher. Just um, yeah, I've I've sat in some classes with Sydney and uh, just really I there's there's something that I don't know. Some people just are really good teachers. Some people just right. have that ability to express what they're trying to get across to people and Sydney is definitely one of those people and you know she she not only knows what she's talking about but she's really good at teaching it also so you. yeah I also did um, public speaking competitions for about eight or nine years before I did cake decorating so that's probably where a lot I'm you know I'm practiced in public speaking so <laughs> awesome all right, we actually have a question already before we get really into things. Someone asked, um, Sydney and Amelia, where did you get your chef coats? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I believe you um, got yours from the same place I did, right? Uh, yeah, I got mine from Peggy Tucker. Yeah, so, yeah, that's where I got mine too, Peggy Tucker, Peg's Premier Products. So, yeah. she, they do a wonderful job, and uh, I, yes, it's... Uh, yeah, Peggy Tucker, it's her sister Sally who makes all of the the coats and she is quite a seamstress. She really is yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Really high quality. I've been really happy. Yeah. <laughs> and me too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um today, Sydney, you have a really cool project that you're going to be sharing. Um it is how do, we, how do we explain this? It's uh, layering um, it's, isomalt? Yes, it's going to be layering isomalt. Um, it's sort of similar to a bas-relief sort of look, um, but it's layering isomalt so that you can make pieces that have a lot of depth and a lot of dimension without um, you know, going into the more advanced blowing. It's mostly casting and pulling, so we can basically take the pieces and just layer them and give them a lot of depth so that you can use them um, for whatever your piece that you're going to make. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So um, you have there is a a kit that um, that you'll be using today and showing you know with your demonstration. Yes. And that kit is actually available uh, to anybody who wants to purchase it at a discount on our website. At the top of the chat box, there is an admin notice uh, that you might see that. Uh, make sure that uh, you read through that. There is a giveaway today, so make sure that you go and you enter that giveaway. That first link will take you to the giveaway, and um, it will also, we have links from there to the, the kits and products that are going to be used today. And also, um, the, the second link that is in that is a link to all of the products that Sydney has on our CakeFu um, marketplace. Yes, marketplace. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, some of them are on sale today and they're uh, really great sales. So make sure that you go and, and take advantage of those sales. Um, we'll call it our uh, post Memorial Day sale, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, really, really great uh, products, really great sales. So definitely go and, and take advantage of that. And don't forget to enter the giveaway because we will be um, selecting our winner towards the end of the training here today. So uh, make sure that you get your your uh, name in there. So yeah. Okay, Sydney, we'll, we'll just let you take it away from here and uh, do your little demonstration and uh, this will be great. Great, okay. Um, so like I said, I'm going to be doing a layering technique that's uh, similar to a ball relief if you've done that with uh, fondant or gum paste. It is a little bit different, obviously, because it is ice malt that's not with fondant or gum paste. So I kind of tailored it so that it would work with ice malt, but it gives it a really, really cool um, technique. And so what I'm going to be making today and showing you guys how to make is a sculpture. Um, I'm going to be doing, it could be a cake topper, it could be a centerpiece, or you could take uh, the individual pieces that I'm going to show you, and you can choose not to put them all together. You can just use them and apply them, put them on cupcakes, put them on cakes, you know, just use them as decorations, however you would like. Uh, so I'm going to do kind of a summer theme since it's getting um, into summer here. So 
I'm going to do sort of a tropical beach scene. And again, you can tailor any of these techniques to whatever you specifically want to do. You can make them winter theme, you can make them, you know, themed, whatever you're making. But I'm going to do a summer theme because summer is one of my favorite seasons. Um, okay, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about ice melt. So if you've not worked with ice melt before, if you don't um, exactly know what it is, I am going to just kind of explain what it is exactly. Ice melt is a sugar substitute, so it's not actually sugar. It's completely sugar-free. It is made from beets, so it's a byproduct of beet sugar. And it starts out like a white powder, and you have to cook it down according to a recipe once. If anyone is interested in that recipe, it is on my website. But uh, the recipe that I use is the same that we use for our ice malt tiles that we manufacture. So after you cook it, it turns into the glassy ice malt that you can see here. So once it's already cooked down, you don't have to worry about the recipe. You don't have to worry about temperatures or ingredients or anything like that. All you have to do is cook it in the microwave or um, over the stove until it's a liquid. So it's kind of like candy melts in that way where all you have to do is just melt it until it's a liquid. I highly recommend that. <laughs> I yeah. do. I highly recommend the, the pre-cooked. They, they are really great. Yeah, it's a lot easier than... I mean, basically when you cook it yourself, um, it's ice malt powder and water, and it takes about 45 minutes, and it's sort of like a tempering process where you have to get it within just a few degrees, and if you get it out of those degrees, it's not going to work the same. So... Um, that's why we decided to sell it pre-cooked, because this is the uh, recipe that I like. This is what I find is easiest to work with, so that's what I'm using today. All right. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do some casting. Now, isomalt works a lot better in high humidity than sugar would. If I were to use sugar, it's going to melt, especially um, today here. It is very, very humid, and just from humidity, even if it was inside in the air conditioning, it is going to melt. So I have to use ice melt to keep make sure that it's nice. But even if you're not in a humid place, like I know Amelia, you're not in a very humid place. No. But even if you're not in a humid place, it's still used instead of sugar because overall it's just better. Um, it's clearer, it's stronger, and it just it's more well known now than it would be to use sugar. It's just a lot easier to work with. So um, that's why I am using ice melt instead of sugar. But I have had pieces melt before just from humidity. I mean. In an hour, it's just going to be a liquid puddle just from any humidity. So it's definitely a good idea to use ice malt and not sugar. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. I've I've done the the sugar thing also, and and just they were just little jewels, and mm -hmm. and like you said, I am not in a very humid area. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they they didn't ever completely melt, but they really they got really tacky within Basically, hours. Yeah. And yeah, it, yeah. it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, right. definitely recommend isomalt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is I'm going to need a base to make my pieces on. So I'm going to need something to work on to add all of the dimension on top. So I'm going to cast or core a couple of pieces to show you. Uh, so I'm going to do a cookie cutter first. And now, since I am doing a kind of tropical theme, I have picked out some tropical cookie cutters. I'm guessing that um, you know everybody has a couple, at least metal cookie cutters. They do have to be metal, so make sure that they're not plastic or else they will melt. But you can use any. This is a flip-flop, if you guys can see that. So it's a flip-flop shape, but you could, again, use any shape that you wanted to go for. Uh, I'm just going to use this one because it will match my theme really nicely. And so you can use any metal cookie cutter with ice melt as long as you grease it. You don't want to do it straight or else it will stick. But if you put a little bit of Pam um, or spray oil, any kind of oil will work, canola oil, vegetable oil, anything, uh, that will keep it from sticking. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, so let's see. I'm going to bring another surface over to work on. And I'm going to point the camera down to it. Now let me know if I need to adjust this any. I think that should work. All right, so I have my cookie cutter here. I'm working on a TFX nonstick baking liner. Uh, you could use a silicone mat or a vinyl mat if you wanted to, but I'm just using this because uh, this is what I have. And I'm going to first, like I said, grease the cutter. So I'm just going to use a little bit of spray. And you don't want to use too much. You don't want it to be dripping. You just want to make sure that it's well oiled or else your piece is going to stick and it will not be fun. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go around and wipe off any excess and then set that onto my sheet. All right. So now I will take, I have some clear ice melt here. And so I melted the ice melt for about 30 seconds and then 15 seconds in the microwave. Again, you can also do this over um, a stove if you want to in a pot. But microwave, I find, is a lot easier, especially if, it's, if you have a silicone bowl, because ice melt doesn't stick to silicone, so you'll be able, you'll have no waste. You'll be able to take um, all any of the excess out. Now, the ice melt right now is about 300 degrees. It is very, very, very hot, and you don't want to touch it because it will stick to your skin and it can cause burns. So I would highly mm -hmm. recommend wearing gloves. Uh, I'm a very bad example, and I don't wear gloves, but only because <laughs> my hands aren't heat sensitive anymore from working with it for so long. So. Um, that's why I'm not wearing gloves, but usually I'll do a cotton glove with a plastic glove over top of that, or you could do two plastic gloves, uh, just anything to make sure that you don't touch the ice melt because it is 300 degrees. So not a good idea. All right. So um, like I said, I'm just going to fill this in. So basically the metal is going to act like a frame. And I did not color this. I'm just going to do it clear because the base color doesn't really matter depending on what you're doing. Um, you could color this, which I'm going to do in just a little bit, which I'll show you, but I'm just going to do clear. Again, personal preference. So I'm just filling, I'm only filling in enough to cover the bottom. I don't want to fill this up too much or else it'll look chunky. All right, so I just filled in a thin layer. Since ice mold is pretty thick, it's going to be a fairly thick layer. It's probably an eighth of an inch, um, but that's enough because ice mold is very strong. Now, if you have any bubbles on the surface of the piece that you just poured, I can take my little chef's torch and just kind of run it over the surface. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I just very lightly, immediately after I poured it, run it over any bubbles, and it kind of heats up the surface and softens it and makes all the bubbles come um, to the top. All right. So now metal conducts heat, so you do want to be careful because the metal is going to be as hot as the ice melt once it touches. So I don't want to touch this. Uh, it'll also get, uh, make it a little bit longer to cool because that metal is hot. So it will probably take about 10 or 15 minutes for this to cool just out in the air. You don't want to put it in the fridge because the moisture will affect it. Even though ice mold is better with moisture than sugar, it can still make it a little bit tacky or a little bit cloudy. So I just am going to leave it out in the air for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I will take it out. Now I'm also going to make a wave that I'm going, that's the piece that I'm going to show you guys how I'm layering. But for this, I don't have a cookie cutter, so I'm going to use my Flexform molds. So these are just um, basically tubes of silicone, and I'm able to use them basically as a frame to make any shape that I want. So to make the wave, I'm going to start with one along the bottom, and then I'm going to use another kind of as a curl for the top edge, and you could make this as big as you want. I'm going to kind of try and fit it to fit on the base that I'm going to use. And then I will use another one. As the outs or the inner edge. So you can see I use three flex forms and then I can kind of move it and make it a little bit smoother looking. Make sure that all the ends are in. If you have any that don't quite want to stay together, you can use something to prop it. Use something heavy like a mold or a pair of scissors or a rolling pin, anything to just kind of wedge. All right? So can mm -hmm. you guys see that? How I have the frame now? Mm-hmm. All right. So now I'm just going to... Kind of like a wave look. Yeah, it's kind of a, a curl, and I can make this more curled or less curled, depending on what I you know, wanted. And now I'm just going to take that same clear ice melt, and again, since this is a base, the color doesn't matter. And I'm going to fill it in. All right. So again, I'm just filling up enough that it's going to cover the bottom. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, if I had to guess. But I smelled is very strong, so even if it's thinner than that, it's still going to be strong enough. Plus, since we're layering more ice smelled on top of this, it's uh, going to make it stronger. All right, we have a couple of questions about the, um, the okay. molds and, and your, your equipment here. Yep. So these are these uh, little stringy things here that you're using. They are your flex forms, right? Yes. 
And those those can be found again through that link that's uh, at the top of the page or yes. the the chat section, uh, that that bottom link uh, or I the top link will will get you there also. Um, but those are the flex forms, and um, also someone is asking about the silicone bowls. Do you sell the silicone bowls on your site? Um, we don't sell the silicone bowls. Hopefully, we will, we will eventually. But our we used to, but our distributor uh, discontinued, so we aren't able to find them anymore. We are looking as hard as we can. Um, but if you want to look yourself to see if you can find any, I've heard that Amazon can sometimes have them. Um, IKEA, Bed Bath and Beyond. It's kind of a hit or miss if you'll find them. But uh, those are the places that I've heard will sometimes carry them. Okay, great. You can also use um, Pyrex if you wanted to, like a glass or a plastic, but it is going to stick, so you just have to keep in mind that anything that sticks to that outside edge that you can't scrape out, uh, you will have to just soak and wash it away. Okay. Here, I uh, forgot that those that are not, um, those that are going to be watching later will not be able to see the chat box. So here's a link for those of you that are watching later that would like to take advantage of the sales. Uh, www.cakefood.com forward slash product dash tag forward slash isomalt dash uh, tools. I believe that says tools. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that's the link to follow to go and take advantage of the all of the discounts and and see all of the products that Sydney has to offer. So okay, back to you, Sydney. Yeah. All right, so now I'm also going to, since I want to uh, use some decorations on my pieces itself um, with some molds, I'm going to use a couple of molds for uh, to layer on top. So if you can use molds to layer on top instead of hand sculpting a piece, I'm going to kind of do a combination. So I'm using our plumeria mold that has three different sizes of plumerias or frangipanis, or is another name for the flower. And I'm also using the long leaf mold, which is what I'm going to use. Um, I'm using the flex forms to also make a palm tree, so I'm going to use these as the palm fronds. Perfect. And these are what you're calling the the summer kit. Yes. Yeah, you know, the summer. Yeah, summer mold kit. I believe. Yes, the summer. Yeah, and the summer mold can also have a blue impression that so the bubble and the um, burlap. I love these mints, and I don't have the burlap one. I need to get the burlap one. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, they're they're great mats. They're wonderful for for texturing. Things. Yeah, and you can also use them um, for the base. I'm actually using the bubble mat for the base by just putting a flex form around it and pouring over it. So they are silicone, so you can pour right onto it. And then I'm going to show you also a little bit later for the um, palm tree for the trunk of the tree. I'm using the burlap as the texture on it, so it kind of okay. gives it a little bit more. Texture. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they can be applied to other things, but that's what I'm using them for. Perfect. All right, so I'm just going to pour my frangipani here, and that is actually going to go on the flip flop, so it gives a little bit of a jewel. All right, and then I also have my long leaf here. Let me scoop this so you guys can see a little bit better. And I'm going to pour just so that you can see how I would pour all of the leaves. Now, obviously, I would need more than one. Um, on my palm tree, I believe I did six. And if you don't have any little areas that don't, or if you have any areas that don't fill in, you can kind of tip it, or you could use a toothpick or a spatula just to kind of spread it in. This one looks like I'm just able to kind of tip it, and it just spreads right in there. All right. Now these will take less time to cool because they are smaller and they're not metal. So these will probably take five minutes before they're cool. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these pieces off to the side up here. And through demonstration magic here, <laughs> I, I, let's not call it magic. Let's, let's call it hard work. <laughs> You've done a lot of prep work for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I have my um, wave here that I had already poured. Now this one I did do in blue. And I'm going to be coloring some in, uh, blue to put on top of it. But I can see first, before I get into layering on top of this piece, I have some rough edges. Can you guys see that, how I have some edges that didn't quite fill in right? They're a little bit rough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the torch. And just, I don't know if you can see, I'm just going to go over 
with the torch and they just kind of recede in. It doesn't matter if it's bumpy um, on top because again we are going to be layering on top of this but it just kind of helps to get any sharp points away. Very nice. So if you have any little bits that ran out or that don't quite look flat enough you just go over them with the torch and they go away. Alright, so let's see if I can have another bowl for this one maybe. So now I'm going to go ahead and layer my pieces on top. So this is the part that is going to give it a lot of dimension. It's going to give it a lot of texture and depth to it. So what I need to do for this, you can use molds. So if you don't want to go into the whole pulling process, you just want to use molds. You can glue molds together, you know, molded pieces onto itself by just torching in between and sticking them together. But I am going to do a kind of more freeform look. So I'm going to put my wave off to the side so that I can pull my ice malt. And pulling gets it from a liquid to more of a solid. Now I am going to color this like I said. So I'm using um, Blue Jay which is one of the sterling pearl colors that's in my kit. Uh, but Blue Jay is one of my favorite colors to use because it's blue but it also has hints of green in it. So it works really really well for water. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. And I have spatula here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Thank you. All right, so I have my spatula. I'm going to put just a little bit. Now, you can use any of their dust uh, to mix in. You could also use a liquid airbrush color if you wanted. You just have to be careful because the liquid will thin down the ice malt. So you just have to not you know, be careful that you don't add too much. But the dust, you can add as much as you want depending on the shade of color that you're going for. So I'm just kind of sprinkling maybe, if I had to measure it, about a quarter of a teaspoon Okay. first. And it is a pearlized color, so it's going to give it a sheen. If you were to use the elite colors, the ones that are more like petal dust, the matte colors, it's going to just be a matte color, so it's not going to have a pearl um, look to it. So I'm just kind of stirring it up, and I think I wanted a little bit more blue than that. Blue is one of my favorite colors, so I like it to be really blue. All right. So you can see you can just add a little bit more if it needs it. And just make sure that it's stirred in. And the, what I like about the sugar art colors is they're ground really, really fine. So I don't ever have any clumping or any problems with having little dots of darker colors in it. It all just mm. makes it really nice. That's good. Perfect. Okay, so we have a question here about the wave part. Someone's asking, mm -hmm. is there any way that you can get bubbles in the waves? Um, you can. Uh, what you can do if you wanted bubbles in the waves, if you wanted to um, do the impression mat, you can use the bubble mat impression and you can heat up the surface of the wave after it's cool. So that piece that I had just, um, the blue wave that I had already made, I can heat up the surface with the torch and use the bubble mat just as an impression like you would on fondant. So I'm going to be doing that with the um, burlap, like I said, on the tree. So you'll be able to see how I do that. But Perfect. you can definitely use any kind of impression that silicone definitely works best because it won't stick at all. Great. That'll give a fun bubbly effect. Yes, it definitely will. All right. So now that I have my blue all mixed in, I'm going to go ahead and pour it out onto my mat. So I'm pouring it straight onto the silicone mat. Again, you could use a Silpat mat, um, but I definitely would use silicone. I wouldn't use the baking liner or the vinyl for this. Definitely use silicone. So I'm just kind of scraping it all out, and it probably has kind of a greenish hue to it being on the orange, and also because the blue for, or the blue jay does have a greenish tinge to it, like I was saying. But once I kind of start pulling it and cooling it down a little bit, it's going to become a really, really pretty blue, kind of green, um, undertone color. All right, so I have my puddle here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling it and kind of folding air into it. That's what's going to cool it down and turn it into a putty rather than a liquid. Obviously right now I can't sculpt with this. I could pour it into molds, but I can't sculpt with it. I can't be hands-on. Um, it wouldn't hold any shape in it. It would just stick and burn and not be good. So what I'm doing is I'm folding the mat right over onto itself. I'm kind of pushing down, making sure that it doesn't come out the ends of the mat here. Don't want it in my lap. <laughs> yeah, better to work with less than, than too much, yeah, right? So. <laughs> All right, so I just kind of push it down to thin it out a little bit, and then 
I pull it back very slowly again. This is very hot. You don't want it to splatter. And it's just thinned down a little bit, and that's incorporating air. So now I'm going to go the other way, and I'm going to take the edge of the ice malt to the opposite edge of the ice malt. So I'm just going to fold completely onto itself, push it down, and then pull it back. Now I can see that the edges are starting to cool, so that's good. And basically, I just keep doing this until it thickens. As it cools, it's going to thicken and it's going to become that kind of putty. It's almost like if you're making dough, it kind of starts out crumbly and everywhere in the bowl, but when it's ready, it will all come together and stop sticking. That's what this is going to do. It's all going to come together, and you know that it's ready when it stops sticking to the mat. So I don't really have a pattern to this or a rhyme or reason to which ways I'm folding it or an amount of times that I do it. It's more just when it's the texture that um, I want, I will stop. So I'm just going to keep going. I can see, I don't know if you guys can see, it's kind of starting to thicken a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's a little crack in the middle, and the edges are cooling down. The edges are always thinner, so they're always going to cool faster than the center, because more kind of accumulates there. When you do fold it, though, you do make sure that your edges line up, basically. Yes. Yeah, I don't want, I want these two edges to perfectly line up. I don't want to go past where it is or before where it is because that's just going to um, make kind of a big mess. It's going to all spread out too much, and it'll dry too quickly. So I want to make sure that I'm directly folding it onto itself. Okay. All right. So I can see that it's starting to release a little bit. Since I'm doing a fairly large amount, it's going to take a little while to make sure that it's all cooled down correctly. So you can see that it's not really a liquid anymore. It's more of, you know, kind of thickening up. It's not mm -hmm. dripping. Alright, so I just kind of keep folding, and it's starting to come together as more of a mass now, and you can see that really pretty blue color is coming in. And it also gets a little bit more opaque uh, as I put more and more air into it. That's what gives it kind of the satin look rather than the translucent, um, clear look that you would get from corn because you are mixing in bubbles, so it does make it more opaque and more shiny. All right, so you can see how it's pretty much all coming together now. It's not really liquidy anymore. It is still very, very hot, so you don't want to touch it yet. All right, now once it gets to a certain point, which you'll be able to feel when it gets there, I'm going to be able to hold the mat with my hand and rip it off really quickly. Do you see how it comes through completely release? All right, so I'm able to kind of go a little bit quicker now. And you want to do this as soon as it gets to the right temperature because I keep going slow. It's going to keep stretching rather than just pulling off. So if I keep stretching, if I over pull this and pull too much air into it, it's going to cool down too much and it's going to turn rock hard and I'm going to have to remelt it and redo it, which is okay. But I want to you know, be able to work with mine. I don't want to keep redoing it. <laughs> So you can see how it's completely releasing now. It's not sticking anymore. That's how I know that it's ready. Now I am going to pull this just a little bit um, by folding it over and incorporating more air because it's not the right consistency to sculpt with yet. If I were to make anything, it's going to collapse and just kind of yeah, turn into a blob. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm just going to kind of roll and then stretch it and fold it over. I don't need to stretch it too much. I don't want it too thin because it's going to cool faster when it's thin. So you want to kind of keep it all a consistent uh, thickness and just stretch it. And this is really what's going to give it that satiny look. Okay, so I just fold it a few times and then roll it. All right. So this, again, is basically the same thing that I'm do I was doing on the mat, except now I can use my hands to incorporate more and more air and get it a little bit thicker than before. So the cooler it is, the um, thicker it's going to be, and the more it's going to hold its shape. All right. So notice that I'm just folding this over. I'm not twisting it up. I'm not kneading it. And that's because, can you guys see those lines that are in it, or is it too bright over here? It's kind of, I'm incorporating lines every time that I fold, and that's the air that I'm mixing in. So if I were to twist this up, the lines aren't going to be going straight. They're going to be kind of going crazily. And it's not going to be a consistent look or a consistent temperature. Temperature is really key to this because if half of it's cool and half of it's warm, the 
cool side's not going to you know, be able to be sculpted, and the warm side's going to stretch, and you want it just all to be consistent so it's the easiest to work with, and it all sculpts at the same time. All right. So that should be good, I think. I can see it's now holding its shape a lot better. It's not just immediately turning into a blob anymore, but it is still soft enough that I'll be able to sculpt with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to put this under my heat lamp, which I have next to me. So you can see, see if I turn my computer here. Can you see how I have it under my heat lamp there? So that heat lamp is a 250 watt bulb, so it's very, very warm. It's going to keep the ice melt soft while I'm not working with it. All right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is now I will take my wave back. And now I can start the layering. So I am going to turn it back here just so that you can see what I'm doing. Right here. All right. Someone uh, did ask a question about the workability of, um, she said because it does dry fairly, or, uh, fairly quickly, is your workability time limited? And that's basically what your lamp is all, all for. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the lamp is what's going to keep it warm and keep it pliable while you're not working with it. Um, as far as the pieces that you take off of that massive ice melt, if you you know cut off a smaller piece to work with, uh, you just kind of have to learn how fast it dries as you work with it. It's really just a hands-on thing of how fast it, you work with it. Um, also, you can it, or it affects it depending on the temperature of the room. So if it's cooler or if the air is blowing right on you, it's going to dry faster. It's really just kind of learning to be as quick as possible with whatever you're making. That way it doesn't dry on you. But you can work under the light to keep it warm if you want to go a little bit slower and kind of take your time with it or you're just starting out to experiment with it. Okay. And then any pieces that you don't like also if it does dry too fast, ice melt can be remelted as many times as you want. So even, I mean, I've ha I have pieces like the pieces that were behind me that I've had for you know, weeks, months, years. I could remelt those at any point as long as there's no dust or anything on it. That would be a little bit gross, but as long as, <laughs> as, long as you know the ice melt is good, you're able to mm -hmm. uh, remelt it as many times as you want. Yeah. As long as you store it correctly. Okay. Yes, yeah, you want to make sure that it's um, sealed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my pieces afterwards, but that and that will just kind of trap out any humidity. But you can also put a confectionery glaze, or you could put an oil on it just to kind of seal it and make sure that the humidity doesn't get to it. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and start making my texture on the wave. So I'm going to take a piece first. So I'm using the scissors just to cut the piece off of my wave, just like that. Yes. All right. So you can see how I just kind of trimmed a tube here. I'm going to start stretching it and rolling it to elongate it just a little. And I'm going to elongate it more on one side than I am on the other, so you can see how I'm kind of tapering it. Mm -hmm. you see that? All right. So I'm just kind of going to stretch it. I'm going to do, let's see, the inside first, so the inside of the curve. Make sure it comes to a nice point where the point is going to be. All right. I'm going to use the torch to heat up on top of my base, so... I'm going to basically completely cover up this whole base piece. This is just sort of a template to follow so that I get the right shape. And it also gives it more stability than just having the pieces themselves. All right, so you can see how I just kind of went along the inside edge. Now I'm going to just kind of stick it. And I'm sticking it sort of halfway on, meaning that half of it is off of the edge. That way I can take it and roll it down so that you don't see the edge of the piece that was underneath. Does that make sense? <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Okay. All right, so you can see how I'm just kind of pushing it down. So I'm pushing downwards with my finger to make sure that it meets the mat and it covers up that edge of um, ice smelt that I had. Mm -hmm. And then I have my first piece. All right. Now obviously as much as you want to do this is personal preference. I'm going to go, go ahead and just cover the whole thing because I think it looks really cool the more uh, dimension and layers that you add to this. So I'm going to go ahead and take another piece, slightly bigger. Uh, 
somebody was asking what size um, or how much isomalt you used to make this blue. Um, to make this blue, I did about uh, that whole bowl was full, and that is a one cup full, so about uh, eight ounces. Okay. And your isomalt packages come in uh, like six ounce packages? Six ounce. So it would be a little bit more than one to do uh, this piece. Again, depending on how many layers you did of the um, kind of the layering effect. All right, so now I'm just going to do one next to it, and I'm going to start kind of layering them on the outside of the first one. So I'm just going to heat up right past where I put that first tube. And I'm going to put the next tube. You can start at the top or the bottom. Either way will work. And I'm just making sure that it all comes to a nice point at the tip and that it's all straight, doesn't have any bumps or finger marks in it, and that the bottom is fairly flat, which I can actually just stand it up and push it down. All right, so you can see how I have the two layers now. Can you see that? Yeah, that's looking really cool. Yeah, so you can see the more that you add to it, the more it's going to look like it's textured. All right, so I'm going to add one more of these tubes to fill out the top. All right, so as you can see how I'm just elongating it. And then I'm going to go back with my torch. Heat up just like I did before. And this is a little bit too soft. Um, from being under the light, it softened since when I had pulled it to get it the right texture. So I'm just going to kind of keep rolling this. And the mat is going to cool it down a little bit so that I, if it's too soft, it's going to kind of flatten. And I want to make sure that it stays raised and you just keep that depth to it. So I don't want it um, too soft of a consistency. All right. And just layer that. And that was a little bit too short there, but I'm able to just stretch it and fill it in. And then I'm just going to kind of to cover over the top because the top edge didn't quite cover. I'm just going to stretch it because it is still soft. So I'm just kind of pushing it and rolling it over the edge. Just like that. Just All right. like you did on the inside, you want to just cover up. Yeah, just like I did on the inside, just to kind of make sure that that edge is covered so it doesn't look too rough. You want to give the illusion that it's all one piece. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can see now it is getting soft because the ice mold on top um, warmed up the piece oh, yeah. that was already firm, yeah, on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, but you can see how cool that looks already. That is really, really um, cool. <laughs> I have a little bit here that is sticking out um, that I wouldn't really be able to cover over here because there's not any up along this edge. So what I'm actually going to do is use that as an anchor to make some smaller waves, again, just to give it another layer. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit more of my blue here. Cut this in half. And I'm going to pull this to get it a little bit cooler because it is warm from being under the lamp. And this will also give it more lines, so it, it works out both ways. It gives it kind of more of a liney, bubbly texture. All right, now I'm just going to roll this like I did with the others, so I'm kind of concentrating on this one side, get it a little bit thinner. I'm going to curl it to make a wave shape. And now I'm going to let this cool for just a minute because I am going to make another one. Um, just to make sure, since this is layering on top of something that's already textured, I don't want it to kind of fall down and conform to those textures. I want it to stay raised. So I'm just going to let this cool while I make the next, the next one. And I'm going to make this one. Actually, I'll probably use this whole piece. And you could do these varied in size. You could. I'm just going to do two, but you could do more, kind of going across the whole thing. Or you can continue it around a cake if you were going to just set this up like a centerpiece on the side of a cake. You can continue these little waves all the way around as a border. That would be really cute. That would be fun. 
But since I'm just making a sculpture, I'm just going to do a couple that are attached. So you can see how I'm just making it the same way and curling it. Ooh. So I have almost like little candy cane shapes. Mm -hmm. a little bit more and now I'm just going to heat up right on that piece that was sticking out that didn't have any of the layered ice mold on it. And attach the first one and attach the next one. You can see how I just kind of layered them on top of each other. Oh, so okay, how cool. Up. That's really cool. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that just added so much right there, just adding that extra layer. That just brought out so much dimension. Yeah. Very cool. All right. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just show you how I did. I'm going to do even more texture just on the front side. Oops. Until I drop the piece. Get a new piece. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And now I'm going to kind of put where the foam would be on the inner uh, corner or inner loop. So I'm just going to take, and I am going to use a piece of blue. You could use white if you wanted to, or a pearl. But I'm going to use blue because I don't want it to be too stark of a difference of color because the foam of the ocean does kind of you know, blend in. Since it is clear, it's going to blend in with the color of the water a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually just going to paint over this with a pearl. So I'm going to take a piece that's kind of a tube shape. And I'm actually going to use my rolling pin, and this is just a regular rolling pin that you would use with fondant or gum paste. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to roll over it just to kind of flatten it a little bit. And now off of one of the um, edges, I'm going to pull like that. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And just pull some little bumps off of it. And that's just going to give it the illusion that it's kind of crashing. You can see it almost looks like a hand. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and now this piece is going to wrap on the inside. I'm just going to kind of curl it over on the inside of that. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. You can see how it just gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more detail. Now this is very soft, so I would not be able to use this right away. Um, I would go all the way down, and I have one that's actually already cool that I'm going to use. But I would go all the way down and keep layering these kind of foamed pieces. Little crashing waves. Right. So I have my other one here that's already done, already cool. All right. And now I'm just going to take and set that there. I'm going to paint over those pieces like I was talking about. Perfect. Someone is asking, how how heavy is this? Um, this whole piece, it, or this piece specifically, like I said, is about um, probably a little bit less than eight ounces because I didn't quite use all that I had pulled. So it's probably about five or six ounces. Um, but depending on how many pieces you add onto the finished sculpture, it will adjust uh, how heavy the piece is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How how large or small? How right? Yeah. Exactly. If is there anything that they need to know? Um, someone was asking, how do you, you know, get this on a cake? How do you adhere it? How do you, yeah? Um, if I were to, was if I was going to put it onto uh, the cake, I would probably use a little bit of liquid ice malt or chocolate to attach it, just to make sure that it's strong. Real icing probably wouldn't be strong enough to so chocolate or ice malt. Okay, great. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and start kind of attaching just to make sure that I get them all on here. I have a couple other pieces that I have already made that I'm going to attach. I have a little margarita glass here that I used a little bit of glitter on the top edge. You can see how I put mm -hmm. the texture on top of that as well. Mm -hmm. I have a sun. You can see I kind of pulled some curlies to put onto there. So I just did each one of the little um, waves of the sun first. And then I put the swirl on top of that on the middle, and I add the little curly cues over mm -hmm. top of the lines. That is so, I love that sun. Thank you. And then I have the finished um, flip-flop that has the uh, kind of straps that are just twisted, and I use the plumeria on top. You can see that kind of gives it a little gem on the top of it. 
Mm -hmm. And I also have a clamshell. So this one I actually used a pearl um, in the ice mold and I dusted over it with brown uh, or with a bronze. So it kind of gave it a little bit more depth in those lines of the shell. Uh -huh. And for my base, what I'm using is I'm using that same mat that I had talked about and I just put a flex form around the edge and I have the piece. Mm -hmm. So see I just kind of filled it up and that's what I'm using for my base. We, we do have a cake food training of you demonstrating just exactly that. So if anybody's interested, yeah. go back yeah. through the archives of, of our trainings and uh, find, find that in training with Sydney. So. Yeah, definitely. And then I also have my tree here. So you can see I have those leaves. And I just kind of bent them a little bit when they were soft right out of the mold. And I have my tree that I use the texture on. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. But I use that mat to kind of give it that little bit of texture just by heating up the piece. In the trunk, I use the flex arms as well. So I just did a straight line instead of a curled line like I did for the wave. So, so with that, you actually make the piece and let it cool, and then you reheat it mm -hmm. to get the texture on it. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I just heat up the surface with the cold and just imprint it. Perfect. All right. So now to put it all together, I'm going to start off with um, my wave here because it's kind of the thickest piece I'm going to build everything off of. So I have some liquid ice melt here that I'm going to use as glue, and it is just clear, but you could use... Um, depending on the color of the piece. If it's all one color, you can use that color as well. So I'm just going to, obviously my wave isn't going to fit inside of the bowl, so I have to pour out a little trench to dip it into. All right. I'm going to take and kind of dip a little bit onto the bottom here. And then I'm sticking it. I am going to overlap it just a little bit. And actually, let's put it on this side. Right on here. And I'm going to pour a little bit more glue onto the back of my piece just to make sure because this is fairly heavy. So I just don't want it to fall. So I'm just kind of pouring a little bit along the back. Just to add that support. Yeah, just to give it some stability. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the nice part about ice mold is it dries really, really quickly. I use ice mold as my glue pretty much for everything, even if it's not ice mold. I use it for fondant to fondant, too, because it dries really quickly and it's clear, which is nice. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach the tree kind of coming up behind it on the other side. Like that. You can see that. Put it up a little bit. All right. So the same way, I'm just going to pour... A little trench and dip the bottom of the tree. And I'm actually going to dip um, on the front of the tree too because it is going to be behind the wave. So I want it to stick to the back of the wave. So I got a lot of glue on there. You don't have to worry too much about the excess because it just kind of pulls away like hot glue, you know. Exactly. Right? Yeah, you can kind of go over it with the torch and that will. Make sure that you don't have any strings. You do have to be careful because if you do get little strings like cotton candy by smelt, they can look like hairs. So you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That would be bad. But if you just swipe over the whole piece when you're done with the torch, all those little pieces just melt straight in. Perfect. All right. I have my palm tree here. And now I'm going to use all of my pieces onto it. Let's see. I think I'm going to attach the sun. Let's see attach the bottom pieces first to make sure that we have room. And then it all looks cohesive. So this one I can actually dip straight into here because it's small enough I can dip it straight in the bowl. So I'm just getting some glue on the back. I'm going to attach it onto the front. And I'll use my little shell. And it may be more flat on the bottom of it. So I'm just going to use um, the spatula, let's see, spatula. This. to put some on the back here. So just spread. Put some on the top of it here too. Okay. 
kind of attach that flat so it looks like it maybe is more on the, the bottom of the seat. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll put my little glass maybe coming out behind the wave. You can see I just scrape any excess off. And then the sun, I'm going to balance on top of the wave so that it looks like it's coming up. I'm just getting a pretty good amount. Let's see. Pour out a little bit more glue here. Mm -hmm. This one, again, since it has lots of layers on it, is pretty heavy, so I want to make sure that I have a really good amount of glue so that it's not going to fall. Attach it right on top, and then there you have the finished piece. Ta da! Oh, that is just so fun. Thank you. So you can see I didn't use any blowing, but I still got a lot of texture. And you could, since uh, how I layered the plumeria on top of the flip flop, you know, you could just use molds instead of hand sculpting if you're not as confident in your hand sculpting. Um, but it really, I mean, the way it was just tubes and some, you know, flatter pieces that I pinched the little. Uh, curls off of. So you can definitely, definitely use this uh, again as a topper or a centerpiece, or you could use it uh, just the individual pieces to decorate individual things. And also, any of the cookie cutters, like I didn't cover completely over the flip flop, um, you could use the texture mat and put the cookie cutter on top and pour straight on it instead of putting the cookie cutter on the mat. You can just put it on the texture mat and then you would get that texture without having to press it in. You can see there's a lot of variations of that. Um, very, very cool. Isn't that cute? Awesome. Okay, we do have a few questions. Okay. Um, let's see. Someone says, should I add super pearl luster dust to the ice malt to make sparkly diamonds, or should I paint the back of the diamond? So this is someone asking if they were to, you know, make the, you know, the gems, ice malt gems. Right. Um, that's kind of your preference. You could do either. You can mix in a disco dust. You can mix in a luster dust. You could um, paint, or, or you could paint on top of it, uh, either straight onto it or on the back if you wanted more of that glassy look. So that's more kind of your preference. What you, I would recommend trying both and seeing which one you like better. Perfect. Um, someone was asking about the ice malt itself. What what exactly is ice malt? Um, isomalt is a it is a sugar substitute, so it contains no sugar. It's kind of a byproduct of beet sugar. So it is made from beets, like um, so. It's just kind of it starts out like a white powder. So it's just a sugar alternative. Yeah. So like most of the sugar-free candies that are out there mm -hmm. are are actually made out of isomalt. Is that correct? Yeah. A lot of um, like if you get like sugar-free Jolly Ranchers and things like that, it's the same sort of thing. It's um, not sugar, but it can be flavored. You could flavor any of these with just the oils. Uh, you can color it. So it works the same way as sugar would, but it's a lot easier to use. Okay. Yeah, one, one tip is don't eat too much of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I smalt, of it. Yeah, yeah, I smalt what it does is uh, it actually is really good for you, and it's recommended that you eat some every day because it doesn't let fats absorb into your body, which is a really good thing. But if you eat too much, it doesn't let anything absorb into your body, and you can, it can make you sick. So as long as you don't eat more than like one of these pieces would be fine, or lollipop size would be fine, um, or like a cupcake topper size would be fine. But as long as you don't eat more than that every day, um, you should be good. Good. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Um, someone is wanting me to show the picture of your dragon. I can pull that up here. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's actually um, right up there. You can see him. Oh, you have him? Yeah, he's right oh, up he's, there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> up there. Here, I've, got a, I've got a picture of it that we can uh, yeah, there he is. share. You guys see that? Let's see. Just about. There we go. There's a picture of this cool oh. dragon. Is this the same technique that you... Um, it's that similar, you I dragon? except I didn't... I didn't any sort of molds or um, the only mold I did actually use a, um, a texture mat for his scales on the sides. You can kind of see above his legs and on his tail and a little bit on uh, where his, near where his ears are. But I didn't use any molds or bases on it. I did the entire thing by hand. So it was layering 
um, layer after layer and kind of just building him up and doing everything by hand rather than using a template like the pieces that we used in the cookie cutters or the flex forms. That is so cool. Is any part of him blown or is it just all solid sugar? He is all solid because um, I travel with him and I didn't want to oh, do it. Okay. It would be a lot more fragile. But you could do blown elements like I could have made um, you know, his wings or his head or you know, part of his body or his legs, pretty much any piece that mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to, you could do blown. Wow, that is so cool. I love it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, how, okay, so about securing this to a cake. Now that it's on a base, you could just make yeah. this a cake topper, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely, I mean, unless you feel like you need extra support, like if the cake is, you might think it's going to be moved once you deliver it, or if you need, you know, for some reason to put it on before you leave the bakery or the house or wherever you're making the piece, um, you can attach it. Otherwise, as long as your the top of your cake is really, really flat, I would just take it separately in a box and put it on when you got to wherever it's going to be served. Okay. Does it need a support in there to hold up that top tier? Will it... With how um, heavy it is, would it smash that top tier, or is it light enough? I've never had any problem with it being too heavy. If you're worried about it, I mean, you can put a support into it. You can put uh, straws underneath, just like you would for another tier of cake. But uh, unless it's going to be sitting on there for a while, too. I mean, if it's only going to be on there for an hour or two before the cake is served, um, it's not as big of a deal. But if it is, I mean, this is a, not a huge piece. So if you were doing something bigger, like an 8-inch base or, you know, a 6-inch, probably would still be fine. But the more weight you add on to it, you know, you can just kind of adjust. But if you're worried, definitely use straws underneath it. Awesome. Okay, we have another question. Will, um, will you be teaching a class on the dragon anywhere? <laughs> They're really um, awesome. The dragon... dragon. I have actually, it's not quite as big. We do have a dragon class. He's a little bit smaller um, just for, you know, time's sake, and, but it's all the same techniques. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we have it for Houston. Um, we're going to be doing the dragon. Uh, I think it's the only place that we have it scheduled so far, but um, we do have him, you know, for the class. Awesome. Yeah, well, he really is amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so, and then we're going to ask one more question. Um, because we're out of time. The question is, what if you wanted to light up the isomalt? Um, would you would you like create a hole in and put a bulb in there or you know, how how would you light up isomalt? Um, you can definitely put lights inside of isomalt since it is translucent. Generally, excuse me, generally you don't need to um, put any sort of hole or anything cuz I mean, it's clear. So it will shine through it depending again, on how thick it is. But uh, I just use the little LED lights. Um, you can get them at, like, Michaels that go inside of balloons. You could use stronger ones if you wanted a brighter light. But what I've used in the past is just the little twist-on LED lights that, you know, have a really long battery life. And I just kind of nestle them inside of, you know, or behind or in between pieces. Um, and it comes out really, really pretty. Perfect. Awesome. That'll be, that would be really fun to, to light it up. And yeah. I mean, it's already, you know, shiny and and mm -hmm. translucent and, and all of that. So to add a light to it would just be, wow. Yeah, that, especially that when you do really pretty. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for that demonstration. I, that's really cool. I, I think this will be a really fun project for people to do and, and something fairly easy. You know, it's, it's yeah. not, yeah, it's it's not something that's going to be really difficult to do. So definitely something that all of you guys should go and try and share pictures with us because <laughs> that would be really fun. Well, Facebook pictures. If anyone has any more questions too after this, you can email or call or Facebook me. Um, I'm always around, so I can definitely answer those. On my website too, there's tons of free tutorials, so definitely check that out. Um, right, so your website is seemecakes.com? Yes, S I M I cakes.com. And what email address would they find you? Um, it's info, I N F O, at seemecakes.com. And um, there's a link through my Facebook too to that. Or you could just Facebook message the page or me personally. Um, so either one of those will work. Perfect. All right, so yeah, go find Steamy Cakes on Facebook, all of that great stuff. All right, so now for the giveaway, guys. Yay, yay. We have a winner selected. 
Um, we only collect the email address, so we don't have a name. <laughs> uh, but the winner is BMT Cake Designs. So awesome. whoever that is, <laughs> congratulations to uh, BMT Cake Designs. I guess it's um, Bobby Luisa Misa Toyer is what it says. Okay, awesome. <coughs> Sorry. I got a something in my throat. Okay, so congratulations. We'll get uh, that over to you. <coughs> My apologies. <coughs> Hang on. <laughs> You're right. Bobby, you want to step in? I'm finished. Oh no. <laughs> All right, we just want to thank everybody for uh, joining us on Cake Food today. Thank, big thanks to Sydney for demonstrating and sharing her amazing talent. And uh, Amelia, am I forgetting anything, or is there anything else we need to talk about before we end the? Thanks again, Sydney. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And don't forget to check out the awesome sales that are on our website. Um, just go to the, um, let's see, let me look up the website before we close it here, the URL. It's uh, cakefoo.com forward slash masters series, or masters dash series forward slash sydney dash galpern dash 91. And that's where you can get the all the kits that Sydney used on this, they're all on sale. So take advantage of that, and we thank you for uh, joining us on Cake Food today. Bye, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Feel better, Amelia. <laughs>